All right, I now want to talk about the the structure of the group report that we expect at the end of problem three. Now, the group report should have a cover sheet, an introduction, an analysis, the conclusion for parts one and two of the question, and then recommendation, which is part three of the question, and then should end with a list of references, or perhaps some people call this a bibliography. Now looking at this list, you notice the absence of an executive summary, which is one of the standard items that's included in reports. We, we don't need an executive summary because this report is, I mean, our word count is about 2,000 words, so it's too short to have an executive summary. So an executive summary is not necessary here. You can go from the cover sheet directly into the, in the introduction. Now I'll go through each of these sections in turn and suggest what each section should include. Now the cover sheet is sort of fairly simple, I suppose. The, the name, the problem, but specifically and importantly, it includes the names and the student ID numbers of all contributing group members. Contributing group members is the important bit of this statement, that we're interested to know who actually contributes to this report. Um, we do realise that not all members of all groups actually work. And so we see no reason for giving, giving credit to people who do no work in, in, in generating the group report. So a member of the group who's not named on the group report will not, I repeat, will not get any credit, will not get any marks for the group report. So it is essential that you name the people who contribute to the group report and include their student IDs. Um, we need student IDs, by the way, because it's uh, we have something in excess of 600 students listed in this report, so occasionally we get confused just with the names. We need student IDs to ensure the right the marks are getting to the right student. Now the next thing here that you're interested in is the introduction. Now the introduction is just saying what the report is focusing on, what you're going to do. So the thing about the introduction is don't write it till everything else is fin is done. Leave the introduction to last. Introduction would expect a rather short paragraph, you know, perhaps just a couple of sentences, saying by saying what the what the report is about and nothing else. So and again, leave it leave it until last. Then everything else is done. It's it's very easy to write a short paragraph, an introductory short paragraph. Now the analysis, now the analysis is the core, the central bit of the report. It's the bit where all your hard work in, in the four weeks of doing this, this problem, that's where all your hard work, your research, your analysis is shown. And so this is a group analysis. Now we do understand that it starts, one, two, three, four, five, let's assume there's five members of the group. We do understand understand that it, it sort of starts at some stage with five individual bits. Now to make to make it easy to actually edit this thing together and generate a sensible and cohesive report, we strongly suggest you that you use a group some a group facility, something like the Google Docs which we produce, we have provided in your group areas. Because Google Docs one document can be viewed by everybody. Everybody in the group can edit it, add bits to it, and so on, and, and change it so that um, it's Google Docs helps you know, a shared thing like Google Docs, which is on online word processing software, helps to structure your report and it specifically helps to organize the analysis, which is you know perhaps eighty percent of the writing you're going to do in the report. So it's important that you get the analysis right. 
Now, one of the things that is very important in doing the analysis is to avoid plagiarism, to avoid including others' work without attribution. It's not that you can't include others' work. We don't expect everything in the report and in the analysis to be sort of newly minted original thought. But what we do expect is that when you're quoting others' work, you indicate that that's what you're doing. So the analysis, the whole report indeed, but specifically the analysis, is checked in Blackboard in this thing called Safe Assign, which is a software add-on to Blackboard. And it, it checks, not directly for plagiarism, it has a huge database of, of sort of essays, reports, contributions, which it checks against. It checks for similarities. And it, it checks for other documents, articles available on the web and so on, and it checks for similarities. The thing about if it finds similarities to some other's work and or to an, a published article and that hasn't been indicated in the group report that it, that it is it is taken from another's article, then um, we draw the conclusion that this is plagiarism. So for example, an example of this would be that you know, it checks something and we, we get a report when we're marking the, the group reports. We get a similarity, a safe assign report, which highlights bits of the report that show similarities to other things that, that safe assign has found online. And it produces an overall similarity percentage. By and large, we, things that are a report that's something like 20% similar to to some other work is definitely a flag that we have to look at very really carefully. Now it is true that that all reports which show some similarities, for example, the even the title of the report is marked as marked as similarity because of course um we have I'm trying to think of this about 180 groups with essentially the same report title. But those things are ignored. Now this for example, this is an example of a report that was that we received about three years ago. Um, it has to do, actually it's connected to, to problem two. So I think there was, at the time we were doing the report for problem two rather than the presentation. But in any case, this, this is a small section of reports. Now the thing that's important here is this this paragraph labelled clinical trials. Now in this report there is no indication that this this was a quotation or something taken from from another report, another author. What Safe Assign did in this report is to it highlights this, it highlights things in different colours. You see that number there, eight, it has a list which which it gives for similarities. Now, um, if we click on this, we get this this thing here, and it's suspected. So the spectral industry is a ninety nine percent match, which basically means like we're pretty sure this is taken from somewhere else. And on the left is the the um, the extract from the group report. On the right is the the source that is found. Now you can see the source here is is highlighted and it's actually a web link. When you click on that web link, it takes you to the web page, which you now have the next page. This is the, the web page here, which this, 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 these two sentences, identical sentences are included in them. So you know, if we find something like this, what we found here is that some information has been taken from somewhere else and it has not been attributed to where it's been taken. So this is plagiarism. This is an attempt by at least somebody in the group to pass off some somebody else's work as their own. And this would certainly be marked down. And 
if the plagiarism in the whole report is quite serious. Um, I do remember in previous years there was a couple of reports where we were getting something like 90% plagiarism, which essentially meant that almost everything in the report has been taken from somewhere else. And, well, the, the people who wrote that report had to suffer rather serious consequences. So, my advice is don't plagiarise. In There is another video in which we explain how to do referencing. So, if this was referenced properly, if this was set in quotation marks and attributed to this, this website, this would not have been plagiarism. This would have been acceptable. So, you know, be careful. Do not plagiarise. Okay, so we move on from the analysis to the conclusion. And remember, the conclusion refers to the first two parts of the question. And that's the important thing to remember here. We're, we're asking for a conclusion about the first two parts of the question. Okay. So, this should fall out of the of the analysis fairly easily. The recommendation, now, this is the third part of the question, the recommendations. What should we do to prevent this sort of thing happening again? Now, we do realise that this is a tough, tough ask of first-year students. Now, the, but the thing to remember here is that this, the government, society, banking, finance and so on, businesses has had a decade to work on this. So there are real things that have happened. And you can look those up, read about them indeed, you'll find some of them some of them referenced in the lesson, other parts of the lesson here. And the thing to do is to look up what, what has been recommended and then perhaps, you know, you can you can add to that or suggest perhaps things that are working well, things that are not working well and so on. And finally, the list of references, the bibliography. Now, you write a bibliography at the end for a few reasons. Um, broadly, which you know, I was going on, I was talking about analysis, I suppose to avoid being accused of plagiarism, to avoid being accused of using other people's work without attribution. But essentially, you list references to give appropriate credit, to say, you know, We've, we've read this, this article, this web article, whatever it is, or this book, and, you know, we've used sort of things out of, from this book. To indicate the research undertaking it, I mean, that's useful because it indicates that the group has looked up this, this long list of things and has considered the, the arguments and so on. You don't necessarily have to agree with everything that you, that, that, that you read when you're doing research. And lastly... It's allowed the reader to consult materials. Now, this is this sometimes be really very important, particularly if there's some controversial thing that the group is saying. We need to know why it is they're saying that, or how they form that opinion, what they've read that gives that gives them those those opinions. It's important that you do that. So that's the list of things from cover sheet to bibliography that we want and all good <coughs> good group reports group reports that get high marks will have these each of these sections included in them as i say we do not require an executive summary and that's because it's a fairly short report you know 2000 words it's 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 it's, it's reasonable i mean i I've, I've read um, our, our report by consultants because where I live a bit there was excessive flooding about two years ago um, we're in a floodplain so um, there was a rather detailed uh, consultants report about how to avoid this happening in the future and that was I don't know just sort of like it wasn't quite war and peace but it seemed like a, a quite a large document and that did have uh, an executive summary which was quite useful because of such a long document. But the report you're doing uh, for, the, for problem three is a relatively short document. You know, 2,000 words is going to be five, five, six pages by the time you finish everything. 
so that's okay there is no need for for a, an executive summary here but other than that you need to include all the the other things and specifically you do need to indicate on the cover sheet the names of the students the student ids and we need details of all contributing members we need that very specifically to ensure that we don't not, we do not give credit to students for just free riding who do no work for the group but expect to get the marks we're we're, we're very concerned with not giving marks to people who don't deserve marks here